But we're now going to take our trigonometric ratios and we're going to try and understand them as function. So we can say that y is equal to sine of x. So where now the angle measure is the input and the output of the, of the input is whatever sine is of that angle. And then we can also have y is equal to cosine of x. y is equal to tangent of x. y is equal to cotangent of x. y is equal to secant of x. And y is equal to cosecant of x. Okay? And um, this is not a huge leap from what we have already done. It's just that we haven't, you know, because we've dealt with sine of x as a part of an equation. We've already done, you know, sine of x is equal to uh, negative 0.87, let's say. Okay, and it's as an equation, we solved for x. But in this particular case, we made it to where sine of x only equaled one number, not an infinite number of possible values. Okay, we've also done, you know, we've, we've done where... Um, sine of x is equal to 1 over cosecant of x, right? This is one of our basic identities uh, in trigonometry. Uh, but again, here we only have one x value, and we would plug that in here and here, and this is just sort of an equality, an equation that makes it true. But in this particular case, what we have over here is we have two we have one equation with two variables. And anytime you have one equation with two variables, you have a relation. You, have, you, it's not, you don't have one solution. You have potentially an infinite number of solutions to that equation. Okay? Um, and therefore, uh, we, and when there are certain circumstances that are met, and I don't want to talk about them right now, but it's you know, the requirements for a function. It has to pass the vertical line test, and that's just an informal rule, but that's the basic idea. Okay? So what we're going to deal with here is um, you know, we understand functions now as a relationship between x and y, but another thing that you have learned uh, over the last few years is that every function has a unique graph that goes along with it. All right, so what I've done here is I've gone ahead and drawn a coordinate plane with a y-axis and an x-axis, okay? And so here's what we need to understand. When we're dealing with a function like sine of x, okay, or y, sorry, y equals sine of x, we can see that the input is an x value, right? And the x value is this horizontal line. So all the values that run along the x-axis here are the values that we will put into uh, the sine function for x. But here's what I, need, what I need you to remember. I need you to remember that what we put inside this parenth these parentheses for sine is what we call the theta angle, right? The angle measure. And so what I need you to understand is that when dealing with trigonometric uh, functions, the input, what is going inside of this, this um, the parentheses right here into the sine function is an angle measure. An angle measure. Okay. Now I want to remind you that sometimes what we have here is like 3x over 4 minus 7, in which case the whole thing is an angle measure. Okay. So um, sometimes x isn't precisely the angle measure, but we know that the x is the variable associated with the angle measure. And so here's what I need you to understand, is that the numbers that we're going to put along the x-axis are going to be angle measures. Okay. So now when we look over to the unit circle, right? I want to remind you that the angle measures are the radians. And, and I, I didn't mention this before, but it's important to understand that everything that we're going to do here is going to be done in radians. Okay? It is all done in radians. We're not going to do any of this graphing in 
degrees, only in radians, okay? So these radian angle measures, pi over six, that you should be familiar with, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, what I wanna remind you is that as we go along counterclockwise around the unit circle, these numbers are getting larger. You know, this number up here, pi over two, is about 1.57. Pi is about 3.14, and two pi is about uh, 6.28, right? But if we go backwards all the way to the beginning, our first number is zero. So when we start at zero, and we go counterclockwise around the circle, the unit circle, our values are going up in value. Now I want to remind you that on the x-axis, going up in value means going to the right. So here's the, one of the leaps that we need to make here. What I need you to understand is that since x is representing an angle measure, and since all of these radian values around the unit circle are angle measures, and since going to the right means increasing and going counterclockwise around the unit circle also means increasing, and because we start at zero on the unit circle, and we also know that on a coordinate plane that this point right here where the x and the y axis axes intersect, that's called the origin, and that is the point zero, zero, right? This is where x is equal to zero. And here's what I need you to understand is, I need you to understand that that point right there along the x-axis, zero, corresponds to the zero on the, uh, on the unit circle. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make, you know, I understand that the unit circle is on a coordinate plane, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new coordinate plane, a different coordinate plane that represents the values, the input and output values of sine of x. And then we can also do it for cosine of x, for tangent of x, and for cotangent of x. And the, the graph that we draw on this coordinate plane over here is going to represent an infinite number of input and output values for sine of x. Now, as we increase from zero, Okay, we go up to pi over two, and then we go up to pi, and then to three pi over two, and then to two pi. And so what I wanna, what I'm gonna do here is this, is as we go along the x-axis, instead of putting one, two, three, four, five, six, that you're used to seeing, we're actually gonna put radians along the x-axis. We're gonna put in pi over two, pi over four, pi, three pi over two, et cetera. And so what I wanna do is this, is I want to, I wanna make this hash mark right here, I'm, cho I'm just choosing this arbitrarily. I want this hash mark to be two pi, okay? That's gonna be two pi. And if these are equal distances here, then going from here all the way over here, if that's two pi, I can go halfway, right? If from here around to here is two pi, then halfway is pi, right? So that means that halfway between here and here is pi. So at this hash mark right here, I'm gonna put pi. Now, halfway between zero and pi, zero, pi, halfway along the circle is pi over two. So at this hash mark, I'm gonna put pi over two and then halfway between pi and two pi is three pi over two. Okay, halfway between three pi over two. So at this halfway point, I'm gonna put three pi over two, okay? And so what we're creating here is an x-axis where we're measuring, the units of measure now are radians instead of just a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, et cetera, okay? Now, this two pi, we have to understand, is the equivalent of about 6.28, and pi is about the equivalent of 3.14. So, 
Uh, if you wanted to know where 3 was, well, 3 is just slightly before pi. It's right about here. That's probably 3. 6 is probably right about here. Okay, and that means that 4 is probably around here, and 5 is probably somewhere around here. Okay, but instead of measuring in whole number radians or decimal radians, we're actually measuring in radians based on pi. Okay, all right. Now, what's between 0 and pi over 2? Well, between 0 and pi over 2 are pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. And so you could put them in here, but it's going to be very hard to draw. Halfway between 0 and pi over 2 is pi over 4. And then slightly before pi over 4 is pi over 6. And slightly after pi over 4 is pi over 3. And we could also put in here halfway between pi over 2 and pi is 3 pi over 4. So we could go halfway here and we could put 3 pi over 4. And slightly before that is 2 pi over 3. And slightly after 3 pi over 4 is 5 pi over 6. Okay. Similarly, between pi and 3 pi over 2, halfway between is 5 pi over 4. Slightly before that is 7 pi over 6. And slightly after that is 4 pi over 3. And then between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, halfway between, we have... Uh, 7 pi over 4, slightly before that we have 5 pi over 3, and slightly after that we have 11 pi over 6. And so what I've now done is I have transferred all of our angle measures from the unit circle onto a coordinate plane starting at 0 and going up to 2 pi. All right? Now I want to take this idea a little bit further because one of the great things about uh, a coordinate plane, especially an x-axis, is how high does the x-axis go? If we keep going to the right, won't we go toward infinity, positive infinity, right? What's way over there? A hundred, two hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a million, a billion, all in that direction. But what if we were to go left from here? What if we were to go this direction? Aren't all those the negative values, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 10, negative 100, negative a million, and eventually all the way to negative infinity? Well, not to negative infinity, but toward negative infinity. Okay? And now I want to relate that idea to what we have already learned previously with coterminal angles. Remember with coterminal angles, after we get to 2 pi, can't we keep going around the circle again? Can't we go up you know, to 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi, 10 pi, 11 pi, 12 pi? How long can we go? We can go to in, toward infinity, right? We can just keep going around the unit circle and just keep increasing because of coterminal angles, right? What else did we learn about coterminal angles? Didn't we learn that we could start at zero and go backwards, right? Can't we go backwards? And then wouldn't this point down here actually be negative pi over two, right? Well, guess what? That would be right here. This would be negative pi over two. And then if we keep going, isn't this point right here negative pi? Yep, so that means this one is negative pi. And then if we keep going, this one is then negative 3 pi over 2. And so that makes this point negative 3 pi over 2. And then if we complete the circle in the negative direction, this is now negative 2 pi. And so this point right here, this x value, would be negative 2 pi. Would we have to stop at negative 2 pi? No, we can keep going. We can, go to, uh, we can keep going backwards and go to negative 3 pi, negative 4 pi, negative 5 pi, negative 6 pi, all the way toward negative infinity. And so what I'm showing you here is this, is that we can graph the output values of sine of, of angles for an infinite number of angle measures that go in the positive direction and in the negative direction. 
And I need you to understand this idea of uh, the x values being the angle measures on here so that you can understand that when we create a, a, a table of values, you know, ultimately we're going to create, we're going to say, uh, you know, if x is this, then y is this, right? So, for example, let's say that x is pi over 6, right? Well, what is sine of pi over 6? That'll tell us our y value. Well, we know from the unit circle, it's not written on here, but we know at pi over 6, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So we know that y would be 1 half. All right, well, what if we then put in pi over 4? Okay, well, sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. All right, how about pi over 3? What's sine of pi over 3? Well, we know that sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2, okay? And we can, so we can create a table of values just like we, you, you have been able to do with quadratic functions, with uh, exponential functions, and all other kind of functions. Uh, and we said that what happens after we get to 2 pi in the positive direction, okay? Well, this would become, you know, we know that this is 2 pi. This would be 3 pi, right? And that means all the way over here, this would be 3 pi. And if we kept going all the way around to here, this would be 4 pi. And that makes this all the way over here 4 pi. Halfway between 2 pi and 3 pi is 7 pi, excuse me, no, over here is 7 pi over 2. And this one is 5 pi over 2. Sorry about that. 5 pi over over 2, and in between we have all the, all the granular measures of the, you know, over 6, over 4, over 3, over 3, over 4, over 6, right? Same thing in this direction, only they're negative, okay? The point I'm making here, what I need you to understand is that, is that this graph that we're going to use, the x values, the units of the x values are going to be in radians, in pi's, right? And they're the same ones that come off of the unit circle. The last thing that I want to show you with this graph goes like this. Is it's important for us to understand the quadrants. We know that up here that this is quadrant 1, right? I'm going to color code these. So, we've got quadrant 1 that runs from 0 up to pi over 2. Well, look, here's 0 and here's pi over 2. So, we know that this distance right here represents quadrant 1, okay? All right. We know that from pi over 2 over to pi, that that is quadrant 2, correct? All right, which means that from pi over 2 up to pi, these x values are going to represent quadrant 2, okay? All right, and then from pi to 3 pi over 2, we know down here this is quadrant 3. And so from pi over to 3 pi over 2, this is quadrant 3. And then from 3 pi over 2 up to 2 pi, we know that that is quadrant 4. And therefore, this region right here, from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, this is quadrant 4. And what we can then do is this. As we go to coterminal angles, we once again, now from 2 pi to 5 pi over 2, this becomes quadrant 1. Then from 5 pi over 2 to 3 pi, that represents quadrant 2. Then from 3 pi up to 7 pi over 2, that represents quadrant 3. And then from 7 pi over 2 up to 4 pi, that represents quadrant 3. Four, okay, and so on. Then it'll be again one, two, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, and we're going to have um, along the x-axis up through infinity a constant movement of the terminal side that goes around. First, the terminal side is in quadrant one, then quadrant two, then quadrant three, then quadrant four. So all of the angles that are in quadrant one occur here. And when the terminal side is, is between here and here, we know that its angle is in quadrant 2, or the terminal side is in quadrant 2, then quadrant 3, quadrant 4. 
then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 again. Going backwards into the negatives, we would just go backwards from quadrant 1, right? Okay, so from 0 backwards to negative pi over 2, this is quadrant 4. And then from negative 2 back to negative pi, we have quadrant 3. And then from negative pi to negative 3 pi over 2, we have quadrant 2. And then from negative 3 pi over 2 back to negative 2 pi, we have quadrant 1. And it'll do the exact same thing moving backwards in the negative. 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, all the way back toward negative infinity. Okay? So the purpose of this particular video, this particular segment, is to just orient your brain to the idea that we are now going to take what we understand on the, on the unit circle and we're going to flatten it out. Flatten it out on an x-axis going up to positive infinity and going down to negative infinity, okay?